and they um, they sit next to each other and they take turns sitting on the nest. Oh, great. That's, that's so sweet. <laughs> it is. And, and he brings little um, bits of grass and things for the, the lady on the nest. <laughs> oh, it's so sweet. <laughs> it is. But I don't know if they're going to hatch. So I'm going to go out later this afternoon, see if there's any news. But there's quite a following. A lot of us like, there's a Facebook page and everybody's sort of like waiting, but it's not happening. Oh, I hope it will happen because it will be such a shame to lose those eggs. Those, those, that swan or the swans, the pair of them, to sit for almost seven or seven weeks permanently in that position and nothing happened. And they don't know when to give up. Apparently about two years ago, they, uh, the eggs did not hatch as well. And, and they waited till about August and then they had to take the eggs away to stop the lady swans sitting there. Oh. Uh, oh. <laughs> Oh, it's terrible. It's trauma. <laughs> I know. Oh. <laughs> but anyway. they're fantastic when they hatch. They're very, oh, very fluffy want, and very pretty. I want to see them. Yeah. It's not happening. Oh. Let, let us know. It would be really... <laughs> really. I take, if I see them, I'll take photographs. But also the seagulls eat them. So even if after all of this, if they do hatch between getting um, from the nest into the lake, the seagulls will kill them. Oh, oh dear. Oh, so that's a down. I didn't mean to upset everybody. <laughs> oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> it's just, yeah. Oh, let's hope it will be okay but it would be really nice to to hear the the end of the story from you please well, update us on any news yeah. <laughs> it's ongoing okay thank you how are you jenny nice to see you yeah and you i'm sorry about last week i've just about got the computer working again but i've been building a small dry stone wall in the back garden just to try and raise a corner. Um, but unfortunately, I twisted my ankle <laughs> while I was doing it. So oh. it was oh, okay. quite nice. Yeah, it's worth it. It was worth the pain. Oh, <laughs> bless. <laughs> it has been so beautiful. Yeah. yeah. But still having difficulties with my grandson, getting him up in the morning. Is he sleeping right now? He's still up a lot during the night, but uh, I bought him some um, new vitamins actually for teenage boys, and that seems to be calming down a little bit. Mm -hmm. But uh, he's getting a bike at the end of the week, so hopefully it, I can wear him out on the bike. <laughs> <laughs> he might sleep a bit better because he's not doing any exercise. He won't join mm -hmm. in with YouTube videos. So anyway, we get there. Yeah, he's good company. That's good, at least, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so that's about it, really. I've been spending most of the time in the garden or chasing his dog. Okay, thank you. Brian, how are you? I'm great, thank you. Oh, good. <laughs> Good, good. You know, you're the, you're, the, you're the lead today. You will be talking to us today. I've got it here. Oh. How is your wife? How is your wife doing? Oh, she's, um, I believe, she's just going down to her mother's, Elizabeth number one, and I'm not sure, but I believe that she's going to take her to the Okay, Glenys is calling me. I think she cannot connect. I will have to answer that. Um, but maybe in the meantime, Celia, would you be able to, would you like to introduce yourself to the group because you're a new person and I know that you wanted to, uh, to join us and maybe you can tell a few words and I will, I will ring yeah, sure. Glenys in the meantime. Yeah, um, so I live in Thomas. 
Um, I'm, I've been retired for a few years and I really like uh, walking. I'm a keen member of Ramblers, but obviously we're not walking in groups mm. at the moment. But I try and go out every day for a walk. Um, and I'm very keen on gardening. I've moved house last year and I've got a very small garden, which is great because I've got a little bit of a bad back. So um, I don't like to strain it too much, but I've really enjoyed in the last week getting out in the garden and I'm planting herbs mainly with a few shrubs and a few clematis. And so the lovely sunshine has been great for growing. But obviously we've got to water our gardens all the time now. So that's, uh, uh, so that's, um, that's mainly what I've, what I've been doing. Um, I do a little bit of voluntary work for Ramblers. Um, I'm the media officer for Devon Ramblers. So it's a lovely bit of voluntary work to do because I'm often sharing on social media photos of people going walking, which is really nice. And it's a nice way to keep in touch with um, other people. So anyway, so that's, uh, that's me. Is that a national organisation? Are you a local chapter or what? Well, um, Ramblers are a national organisation, but we have... Um, uh, county-wide and then County, okay. more group uh, so our, our groups are either in the town so I'm a member of uh, Totnes Ramblers um, but we join together with all of our Devon Rambler groups um, obviously at the moment we don't see each other in person um, but I'm on the committee for Devon Ramblers and I do publicity work I'm the media secretary and I do publicity work. And we've had a, um, a media campaign called Rome Sweet Home, which is all about walking from your doorstep. And, um, and for people who don't get out, maybe exercising in the garden or exercising indoors. So I've been posting photos on our Twitter and Facebook accounts and Instagram, all about walking and uh, where getting photos from members and I'm running a photo competition for our members to help us keep in touch. Aggie, I was just saying that I'm, I do a bit of voluntary work for Devon Ramblers. I'm the media secretary. And because we can't meet each other and we're used to going out in groups, we're missing each other. So I'm running a, a photo competition for our members. Sadly, I can't invite you all to join. Um, and there's two themes. One is about where can you walk from your house? So Rome Sweet Home. And the other one is to ask people to share photos of um, them when they were rambling and walking in their youth. Oh. So, uh, so I, I thought it might be photos from the 70s and 80s, but it turns out we've got one guy who sent in a photo from the 1950s when oh. he was a teenager. So it's been a lot of fun and we found a way of having a good laugh, which, which is nice, so. Yeah. Yeah, so that, that's, so I do a mixture. So where, where do you come from, Celia? Um, I'm from Northumberland originally. Where I'm, about? Um, Ashington. Oh, Ashington, okay. I'm from Newcastle. How are you? Right. Yes. Yeah. How long have you lived in uh, Devon? Um, about 10 years. All right, okay. Yeah. But I lived overseas for a long time, so. Okay. Well, I last lived in, I lived in Newcastle for a few years, and I left in 1983. Oh, oh, right. no. oh yes, I'm, I'm, the, I'm back. Yeah. Yeah. I thought I recognised a, a northern accent going there. Yeah. <laughs> it's always nice to meet people. Oh, Glennis, you are with us. I can oh. see. Yeah, she's connecting. She's connected. Somehow I disconnected accidentally and I thought I've lost everything. Yeah. Um, but then Glenn is, Glenn is connected and um, Alan uh, disconnected, but he's been trying to, to in, you know, connect it with us, but I cannot put him in. Um, and we don't have um, videos. Oh, um, yeah. Okay. Can you hear me now? Can, yeah. 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 But don't have Glennis. We, oh, there we, we go. There's Alan. Oh, there's Alan. Alan's come back. Glennis, I we can see that you connected with us. Perhaps you don't. You don't. Um, 
video. Ask, but you can influence. Brilliant. So maybe let's say like let's stay like that. I will disconnect on the phone. Echo. Okay. 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 Brilliant. Okay. Hello, Anna. We lost you. We lost you for a second. Yeah. And I couldn't. And I couldn't accept your. Uh, you know your. Wait, you were waiting, and I couldn't hear you. I don't know why. No, you just seemed to pack up for a while. Everything else was working, but no idea. <laughs> People saying that sometimes Zoom uh, has that Zoom has problems. I don't know. Yeah. We've never had any problems before. No. Oh well, I'm back. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. Yeah, thank you so much for talking to people while I was busy and, <laughs> and trying to put Alan back. Glennis, can you hear us? So I will call her while we were talking about um, stamps and book collections, uh, Brian's stamps and book collections. Does anyone have any questions before we start doing this? That's why I would like everyone to mute. Except Brian. So if we can mute, uh, you know, if we can mute our computers, then Brian will be able to talk. So Brian, can you can we give you time now? Would you be able to? Can you can you start? Basically, Brian uh, has a great passion of stamps and book collections, and he kindly agreed today to talk about it um, to the group. And I know that um, Kathleen also uh, kindly agreed to give uh, a bit of information about her. Um, uh, collections after Brian's um, time. So hopefully we'll, we'll do it um, today. Hopefully everyone will, will hear us. And I will mute myself right now. And it's, it's on you, Brian, now. Thank you. Can everybody hear me? Right. The first thing I wrote about was when the first stamps were issued. First stamps were issued was the Penny Black and the Tuckney Blue in 1840 at the suggestion made to Parliament by Queen Victoria. She had said that post would be delivered by postman. All the first stamps were imperforated, which means they did not have any perforations. In 1854, the per first perforated stamps were printed. These were a penny brown and a penny red and a two tuppenny blue. This is the start of the post as we know it today. After this, other countries started producing stamps and they also started posting letters and parcels. Also after this, Queen Victoria started collecting stamps and every stamp in her collection are mint stamps. Most of them were one of the first ones printed. When she died, her collection 
passed down to King Edward VII, who continued the collection. Now every stamp that has been printed throughout the world is in this collection. Also, there is a copy of every stamp that has been used is in the British Museum. You could say that Queen Victoria was the first stamp collector. Stamp collecting is a very good way to eat out or oh, eat into the hours of self-isolation. When did I start collecting stamps, you may worry, wonder? Well, it was when I was 16 years old and I was off work sick with mumps. Where I worked, there was a father and son working there. We both had very good collections of stamps. Derek, the son, I rang him one morning and I had been off work for nearly a week and my doctor had said I would possibly off until Christmas. This was at the beginning of October. So Derek said he would bring in the last two issues of Given Stamp monthly and ask one of our representatives to drop it into my house. And this is what he did. From these two books, I ordered a stamp album and five packets of spare sheets to go into it and also some stamp hinges and a packet of 10,000 world stamps. Not included was any GB or some of the larger countries in the Commonwealth like Australia, New Zealand, Africa, and South Africa. Now this was the start of what is turning out to be a very large collection. Except for the British stamps, all the other stamps I have that are what is known as used stamps or off paper. I have got a few Isle of Man stamps which are mint. I have got about half of their stamps. A lot of stamps from some of the countries other than GB and Commonwealth countries look as if they are mint stamps but have a post stamp on them. And these stamps are known as cancelled to order. This means that the countries produce more stamps than they need and by doing this stamp dealers buy them and then sell them on directly like me. Most of these countries are from some of the smaller and poorer African and Asian countries. This brings in revenue to the countries. I have got a few of these stamps besides my British stamps. I have got quite a few sizable collections. These include USA, USSR, and Russia, Hungary, and Germany. This is this includes pre Second World War, post Second World War, when Germany was split into two, East and West Germany, and now it is back to just Germany. I have got about two thousand, might be a bit more. Also, I got Czechoslovakia, France and Poland. Most of these I have approximately 1,000 plus stamps. I've still got quite a few countries to sort out, like South Africa, China, Japan, all of which I have got many stamps. I have been very lucky as Ted, who was my best man, has got a very large collection of stamps 
unfortunately he lost his wife after 60 plus years of marriage he is now 90 years old he has given up given me two boxes of his duplicate stamps which i am slowly going through and checking to see if i have not got any of them it is very sad for him as now he has almost completely gone blind he has also given me his latest Stanley Gibbon stamp catalogues for the world about me when I sort out these stamps. Besides my collection of GB presentation stamps, which are all mint, I have got a collection of the Queen Mother. These are stamps mainly from Commonwealth countries. Not only have I got the stamps in sets, I've also got a lot of these in full sheets. Included in these are some gold leaf stamps, which I have also got in full sheets. I have got two sets of these in full sheets, as one set had HRH instead of HM. They took the first set out of circulation, but I was lucky enough to get both sets. Ted says he would put them into albums for me whilst I was in our shop. He made a great collection for me. He said it was a joy to sort them out. He also took three boxes and four carrier bags of used stamps some were off paper, but most were on paper. It is quite easy to get most stamps off paper. All you need is one saucer of water and a pair of tweezers. That's all you need, except in it is a bit more difficult to get off the self stick ones, which most countries are now using. Well, I hope this has been quite interesting and I hope that it was not too boring. Thank you all for listening to me. Thank you. Thank you so Thank you. much. <laughs> Thank you so, so much, Brian. So, Brian, how do you get off the self-stick stamps? How do you remove them? How do you remove them? Well, first of all, I've got... Um, some special um, stamp lift as it's called it's a special type of you get a paintbrush and you paint the back of the paper that they're on and it sort of melts the, the glue stamps. yeah and it's it does work Otherwise, the other way of doing it is putting them into warm water, not cold water. You use cold water. But if you put it in warm water, that melts the sticky stuff on the back of the stamps. And then with a bit of using the tweezers, gradually moving the, you can get them off. But it's very, very long winded doing it. <laughs> Oh, it sounds it. Yeah. Very um, interesting. Yeah. I personally don't bother to try and get them off anymore. <coughs> I usually cut around the paper, on the paper, around the stamp, not cutting the stamp, so you still got all the perforations and that on there. And then I use that as being put into my collection. But um, Ted told me how to do it with using hot water. Sorry, I'm not sure. Oh. <laughs> that was that was Alexa coming on. <laughs> Alexa. Alexa. <laughs> she's Alexa. Zoom, she's zoom bombing the call. <laughs> anyway, um so I've tried what he said and that works a bit better than using cold water. 
So from now on, we're going to use warm water, not hot, but warm. And just put a blade stamp on the paper in the saucer. And then after it's been in there soaking for a minute or two, you take it out and then you gradually peel, stamp off the paper. It takes a little while to do, but it does work. Wow, that's quite amazing. It is. Um, I know you said you come from Poland. Yes, originally I'm from Poland. Yes, well, I have got over a thousand Polish stamps. Oh, wow. Collection. I haven't counted them, but um, it's quite a lot there. But considering there's about 5,000 different ones that they, they've uh, done up to 2008, I, you know, I've got a long way to go to get all of them. <laughs> so what is your, what is your, like, oldest stamp you have? from the whole collection? The oldest one? Oh. Um, I've got quite a lot of Queen Victorian ones, but they're not a penny black or a penny red. I've got a Tupney blue, um, and they've all got Queen Victoria's heads on. The remainder of them, which I've got, are all the small <laughs> starting <laughs> off. Starting at two shillings, five shillings, two stamps. But since we went metric, as in 1971, my whole collection of stamps, which I've got in presentation packs after 1971, all of those stamps are now, um, what's, what's the word? Yes, oh, they're, they're being tender. So if you were any of those stamps on an envelope, and a lot of the stamp dealers, when they write to you, they put the, these stamps um, onto the envelopes which is a good idea. It helps you get some more, some of these stamps that you haven't got. <laughs> so I have got a, a good collection all told. I haven't counted them, but the ones that are, have been put in albums, not including my Great Britain ones, I've got something in the region of about 40,000 stamps. Oh, wow. wow, wow, that's, that's amazing. I, I used to collect stamps when I was a teenager because my granny was a postie and she used oh. to buy us the first day covers as she, when we were young. And um, sadly it all stopped when she, was, um, when she retired. Um, but um, yeah, if you saw a photo of my granny, you would laugh because she was four foot 11 and uh, she was very short, but she would look very dapper in the uniform anyway. So I collected these first day covers and I've kept them because they're a great bit of nostalgia for my... You, you still have them? You still have them? I still have them. I did wow. collect stamps as well for a while, but I didn't keep the, um, the albums of stamps. But these um, first day covers, I mean, as, as such, they were always commemorating some special yes. event or a special person. And yeah. so they're a great reminder of things in the 70s, you know, it's a um, nice bit of nostalgia. Some of those are worth quite a bit of money. Are they? Ooh. <laughs> I have, fortunately, I haven't got um, what you can get from Stanley Gibbons. Yeah. Or the um, cream of stamp collected. They have got books, Stanley Gibbons catalogues, for postcards and also first day covers. Ah, right, okay. And I'm not sure how much they would cost for the simple reason I've never bought one. But I know they do them because they're always advertising them in their, in their magazine. 
Well, you've given me an idea, Brian. I'll um, I'll have a look online. See if I can see. <laughs> you, can, you go online. Yeah, I'm going to write that down. Yeah, yeah you should. And you should be able to find out the ones you've got. What? Yeah, I'd love to know how much they're, they're worth because they've got sentimental value. I don't really you wouldn't want to sell them. them. You wouldn't. Sell I don't them. really want to sell them, but I, I'm mm. just curious. It's a bit like Antiques Roadshow. Yeah. But if I, if I you're a millionaire, you want to find out if you're a millionaire. Yeah. <laughs> I otherwise I don't have anything else that would be of value to go on. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, that's great, Brian. Thank you. That's really, really great. Does anyone have any other que any questions to Brian? So how much physical volume does the, your stamp collection take up? Do you dedicate a bedroom or what? Well, I've been sat in the lounge where I am now and I've been doing them on the settee. Can't actually see the, um, the books, but I've got... Um, three of the Stanley Gibbons catalogues on the table. And what I do is I go through the stamps, I get them put in order of when they were printed. And then I can I then mount them into a catalogue or into a, a, an album. And I keep all the albums in my bedroom. I ain't got much room to walk around in there. <laughs> That's what I thought, yeah. <laughs> Behind me, right, they're not books, they're all DVDs. Oh, wow. Yeah, and I've got some quite good collections there of DVDs. I think one of the best ones I got is I can remember Morecambe and Wise, and I've got the full full collection of Morecambe and Wise. The same with um, Love Joy. I still like watching him. And I've got this, all of his um, DVDs, Morecambe and Wise. Um, and then the two Ronnies. I've got every one of the Ronnies because they were brilliant. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, we've got a, lot of, um, we've got a lot of war DVDs, films, and also documentaries. And you might see a lot of, you might see a lot of, well, you can see behind me, on the top, are the plates with planes on. And I've got a complete set of nine dishes, plates, of the Dam Busters, and they did well, you know, and things like this, and I've got them all around the room, but um, I've got photographs of Spitfires and Lancaster bombers and around here. Now, my wife's father was in the RAF drawing the, drawing the, um, the war, and he was stationed in a place called Bulawayo, which is part of Zimbabwe now. It was in Rhodesia. And he was stationed there during the war. He also, um, he also went into Burma with, his, with, the, with, the, with some planes to pick up some of the injured soldiers. In there before in the war, we picked them up and brought them, brought them back to Bulawayo, and then they got transferred to England. And um, yes, he did a good job during the war. I can't ask him any more about it because he's dead. Um, <laughs> he died in 19, I think it was 19. Nine when he died, I didn't know him because I've only been been um, married for eighteen years. To Guinea. I'm her second husband, 
and both her daughters have, have um, really took to me, which is good. They are a bit older than, well, they weren't when I first started going out with them. We got married in 2002, we got married. And um, yes, it'll be 18 years in October. Wow. So, you know, but she's been ever so good to me. Oh. Maybe you can, you can, maybe you can invite your wife sometimes for our session as well. Maybe she would like to join us. At the moment, she's not only my carer, she's her mother's carer. She's 79, or her stepmother, that is. She's, she's 79, I'm 72, and, you know, and, and she does, she has to look after, look after me. Mm -hmm. Which I'm really pleased about. But, um, anyway, I hope this was quite an interesting subject. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much for sharing this with us. Um, it was really, really interesting. And um, I, I'm really impressed because um, it's so nice to um, hear um, inspirational stories from people. And okay, this, is, this is truly your passion. So it, thank you so much for sharing this to us as well, Brian. And um, uh, well done. <laughs> well, <laughs> uh, shall we shall we move to Kathleen now as well? And uh, well, it's hard to follow Brian with his forty thousand stamps, <laughs> but all I have is one album, and it's a um, where's my camera? <laughs> Can you see it? It's an official German stamp album from when they occupied Poland from 1939 from the central, the general government, and it's an official stamp album, and they took over Poland, and they took the Polish stamps, and they overprinted them with swastikas and all their own, I don't know if you can see it, all their own writing, and, uh, Here's some. I don't know how much how much you can see. It's got to be seen in like real life. But they also um, they they overprinted the pictures from Polish history, and the heads of the Polish statesmen were deliberately covered by Nazi stamps to cover them. And they also took um, Polish buildings, and they. Um, they made, it's quite a few pages, too many to show you. But they also, let me find them. They also took some of the famous, um, famous Polish buildings in Krakow, um, Warsaw and Lublin. And they um, st over stamped them and they call them German buildings. And uh, they had, for the, to raise money for the German Red Cross, they had some stamps. But this, this album has many, many pages and pictures of um, famous people, famous, probably to, probably to Polish people, <laughs> very famous people. Um, and they just made them made them their own, but in addition to there's many pages, but in addition to that, they also did um, the the proofs for like, every time when Hitler had a birthday, they they produced photo um, new stamps, and they had all these um, I guess the um, deciding which colors to use for for the Hitler stamps, which is kind of kind of interesting, um, and there's just there's just so many so many loose things, and I have no idea what it's all about. But 
I inherited it, but they've got German um, imprints like swastikas and German wings and things. So very interesting album, but it's only one album. And uh, so that's my contribution to stamps, <laughs> but it's one book. So Thank that's you. it. Thank you so much. Yeah. Um, any but questions? I, I think you have to see it to appreciate it because it's hard to show you all the pictures, but they're very pretty, very pretty stamps. And it's, it's beautifully presented. And it was presented as a gift, um, a, a gift book to, I think, high ranking German officers. Okay. Um, maybe uh, Brian and you, Kathleen, you could <laughs> take a picture of a few of your stamps and send it to me so I will share it with the group. Yeah. And see just like a taster of it. Okay. Because it's, you know, there's quite a lot of stamps in here. Yeah. So you, if you could choose a couple. So, some, could... some pretty ones. There are some very pretty ones. But so they deliberately obscured heads of uh, uh, Polish statesmen and um, they, they just wanted to obliterate their history. Yeah, yeah. That's really interesting as well. Thank you for sharing this. I, I find this, this is, I find this <laughs> really interesting story as well, piece of history. Do you have any questions for Kathleen? Could I ask, um, how did you come to inherit it? How did your it family... Was my it was in my late husband's family, and I don't know the history of it. Uh, okay. They just, my husband had it. <laughs> yeah. Don't know. You know, I think there were um, probably returning soldiers from the war or something. I don't know. It's, yeah. I mean, they had it from like post war. Mm. You know, it, it's not something they acquired recently. Um, and it's as long as I known, <coughs> known him, he, he had this album. And it was in his family. Oh. I've never had it valued, no. Got no idea. But it's, it's one of those things that if you had it valued, um, like Celia was saying, would you sell it? You know, I wouldn't sell it. Are you neatly sure it's... Um, I'll give it to my grandson, probably, when he's old enough not to sell it on eBay <laughs> 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 to buy a car. <laughs> mm -hmm. Do you have a favorite one? Do you like, is there anyone you like most? A picture or something? I, I like ones with color. I like color, I'm strong colors. Mm -hmm. So not a particular favorite now. I'm not truly that familiar with it, but I went through Google Translate and translated all the German inscriptions so I could read what it was written, you know, what they were saying on this album, because mm. it didn't make any sense, you know, and it was, um, but I, I got the gist that they were like, when they first took over Poland, they used the local um, stamps and just overprinted them, and there was a printing, um, a printing office in Vienna and all the stamps went to Vienna. They were overprinted and then sent back to, to Poland to, um, and, and some of the stamps had two parts that you had to um, maintain a, in the post office. You, they had to maintain like a proof of postage. I don't know if you're familiar with that, Brian, that concept. I've never heard of it, but that is quite feasible because, um, you get to some countries, yeah, this, this does happen, but um, I've never, <coughs> yeah, like these, these, these stamps here. It said the top ones somebody bought them, and the bottom ones were maintained in the post office as proof of postage. Yeah, it's a concept for them. Um, and there, and there was a lot, of, these stamps were made for um, raising money for the war effort. So there were surcharges on various stamps. Mm. Uh, that's only what I got from Google Translate. I'm not an expert. <laughs> well, you, seems like, you seem like an expert. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> I think it's, 
it's knowing more than anybody else on a subject. <laughs> and I don't know much. But I found this topic quite... Uh, um, uh, I, I would like to, sh now, after hearing you guys, I would like to search more about it. I wasn't <laughs> expecting that, if I'm honest. So thank you for sharing this uh, to, to us and to the rest, to me and to the rest of the group. And um, uh, I would like to ask you, if you don't mind, if I uh, put the, this session into our Devon Communities oh. the website. Yes. Um, and people can um, listen uh, the, the passion you, you, you both had in your lives about for stamps. Um, and maybe, maybe we will have some more people who would like to contribute into this topic sometimes in the future. And we'll learn about stamps. <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay. Is everyone okay with that? If I, if I put the... Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, thank you so much. And uh, we also did say that we will have a bit of a comedy time, like jokes. Please tell me that some of you knows, know some jokes because I'm not really good at it. Oh, Kathleen has some. <laughs> okay, shall I start off? Okay, yes, please. <laughs> okay. So I, I told my physical therapist that I broke my arm in two places. He said, Stop going to those places. <laughs> I get it. <laughs> English is my second language and I get it. <laughs> you got to laugh. Well, but you know what I thought? Uh, I thought uh, you will be laughing at me more than at my jokes because I thought... <laughs> so <that's funny. laughs> okay, yeah. Carry on then. Any other jokes, Kathleen? Yeah. What did the left eye say to the right eye? Between you and me, something smells. <laughs> <laughs> and that's the, okay. Okay. Um, nev never criticize someone until you've walked a mile in their shoes. That way, when you criticize them, you'll be a mile away and you'll have, you will have their shoes. <laughs> smelly shoes <laughs> smelly shoes and, and my last one um, I stood on my cornflakes this morning making breakfast does that make me a serial killer <laughs> I like this one <laughs> and that's it <laughs> well done <laughs> I got one from um, the Google this morning because I'm not very good at jokes and um, I don't even understand it. It was Paris from Edinburgh Fringe <laughs> and it's uh, I was raised as an only child which really annoyed my sister. I don't think that's funny. You um, was, I was raised but yeah. as a, I was raised. Uh, as I think it means the parents spoiled him yeah. and ignored the sister. Well, yeah, or maybe he was thinking this way. Yeah. I don't think it's funny. I don't um, think it's funny. No. no. No, well, anyway, that I gave up at that Chip, point. chip on the shoulder. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Not as good as yours. Well. <laughs> Did you get yours from Google? Um, I, I think I just knew them. Just a few, yeah. I used to buy the children joke books, but I couldn't find any of them. Yeah. They usually use the best ones. They're funny, yeah. Yeah, but uh, no, don't really listen to jokes anymore. Oh, yeah. <laughs> maybe we should actually, uh, this week as a task for us, maybe we should read some jokes and, and oh. laugh a little bit. Oh. You, will, <laughs> you know, it will help us with the muscles and stuff. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Um, Brian, Alan, Celia, do you know any jokes? Glennis? Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Oh. <laughs> I've got some sound on now. Yes, we've noticed. I've got a, a joke, a couple of jokes. So okay. Here we are. 
Why do we ask actors to break a leg? Oh, it's a question, more than Because they're part of the cast, or they have a cast, or something about a cast. Yes, you're there, you're there. Mm -hmm. Because every play has a cast. Every play has a cast. Yes. And the other That's one is, you know, somebody actually complimented me on my driving today. They left a little note on my windscreen. It said, parking fine. So oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> and that's as far as I have. <laughs> yeah. I like that. Well, well done. I can see you. I don't think you can see me. I only just managed to get some sound on. So I have heard Brian's and yours as well. Um, your talk, and they were very interesting. Thank okay. you. Yes. And I, I really, oh, I really can't like see you. Place. No, I know. I don't know what I have to do to make myself see. So it's all right. I'm quite happy. <laughs> <laughs> Being anonymous. I remain anonymous. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> don't worry. We'll we will sort it out, Glennis. Yes, but I think yes. I'm really, really happy that you can hear us and you can yes. see us as well. Okay. So that's really great achievement. I was very surprised when I got a sound on. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yes. <well> Perseverance. <laughs> um, Alan, do you have any 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 jokes? Do you know any jokes? Oh no, I'm rubbish at stuff like that. I can never remember them. <laughs> I don't worry. Um, are you Brian? No. Anyone else, Celia, or anyone else would like to? Mela, would you like to? Mela. Oh, like she loves. I don't know. She she told me one joke one week ago last week, but I don't know. Would what? you like Would you like to tell some jokes mm -hmm. to the group? Not the same one. But you need to come here so people will see you. I uh, please. I do apologize. I'm, I have nothing to do with those jokes. <laughs> I don't know. Why did the cow cross the road? Why did the cow cross the road? Mm. Mm. Oh. Why? To find, see the chicken? <laughs> Forget the chicken? Um, what? To go to the toilet. <laughs> oh my goodness, that's not funny. <laughs> <laughs> that's the sense of humour for eight years, or seven years. <laughs> <laughs> that's... <laughs> yeah, like yeah. out of nowhere. better. <laughs> 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 Oh, thank you. I, I, I really enjoyed this session. I hope you too. Yeah. Um, uh, thank you for, for joining today. And um, I've got a small surprise for you for the next week. I know that we usually decide what we would like to do next week, the following week. But I was able to talk to someone who would like to join us next week. And I would like to ask you if you are okay for that session. Um, it's a lovely lady. Uh, her name is um, Jane, and she is a chair exercise instructor and chair dance instructor. So she would like to give us a session next Tuesday of Ex yeah. chair exercising and, and chair dance. <laughs> so will you be okay with that? Would you try it yeah. next time? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Okay. And then maybe the following week we can together decide what you would like to do, or maybe if you could think about any topics you would like to uh, try, then we can discuss it next week. Good. And also before we say goodbye to each other today, I would like to give you a task which I, I find really useful. I've been doing that myself already and I've introduced this to some of the participants I talk to um, over the phone. We, we call some of your friends from, group, from the groups you used to go, um, from the highlights group, but um, those ladies cannot join us uh, on Zoom, so I call them every week as well. And we've been doing these exercises, this exercise as well together. It's called Jar of Hope. And what we do, we take a jar 
anything you have you've got at home if you have a jar or glass it could be a glass and every day we put into the jar a piece of paper with a sentence um, and a sentence is something about um, what made you happy today or something you achieved today something you noticed and made you smile or something which you were really proud of and it could be just once a day and you can put you know as much information as you want you can just put like a flower and put it into the the jar or you can put i achieved uh, i um, not, not like like from my experience and that's what i did did put um at the quiz of um, 60s and 70s music, I was able to answer three questions out of 30. <laughs> so, <laughs> do you remember that? <laughs> so, I was really proud of that <laughs> because that was not my, my cup of tea. So, you could put anything and I would, I would like to encourage you to start doing this exercise. Um, you can do it every day or you can do it any other day or when you remember and then maybe each session, each Tuesday, we can pick one, if you want, you don't have to, but we can pick one of the piece of paper from each of our jars and we can read it out and we can share this experience together. And then at the end of this story, when we can meet finally physically together, we can maybe bring our jars or bring a piece of paper from a jar and we can also share it together in a real life. What do you think? You, would you like to try this? That's good. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so that's something I, I would like us to, 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 to try and, um, and to do and hopefully uh, this will bring some lights to our lives and then also we can, we can um, uh, share these things to each other if we wish we don't have to but if we wish and then I believe also this could make us more connected to each other okay good mm -hmm. yes. Brilliant. <laughs> thank you so much for joining and thank you Celia for, for joining us as well please please if you would like to join us next Tuesday or even like, you know, every Tuesday, please do, because it's so lovely to see new faces as well and new people. So that will be great. And uh, thank you everyone for your contribution. Thank you, Brian and Kathleen for, for your really interesting stories about stamps. I found this really interesting and this is something new to me. So I've learned something today. And before I forgot, can you please tell me what each of you had for breakfast? Because oh. I could. <laughs> you never have to ask me. Okay, trumpets, I remember. <laughs> Marmite. <laughs> and Marmite. Oh, I, I had crumpets today. Kathleen, you introduced me those, those things and now I love it. You're good. <laughs> but uh, do you remember at the beginning, I even didn't understand the words. I was trumpets. saying trumpets. Trumpets. <laughs> <laughs> Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Glennis, what did you have for breakfast? I had cereals and I had blueberries. Oh, you mean I like, uh, cereal killers, you mean? Or no, no cereal. <laughs> cereal. Cereal. <laughs> and then added the blueberries, fresh ones. Yeah. Oh nice. Yes. I used to be able to collect them off the moors in Yorkshire. Mm -hmm. They grew wild there. Wow. The blueberries. But we called them bilberries. Oh, build yeah. build yes. yeah. And we could just collect them off the moor and, you know, in about July, August, and they were absolutely delicious. <laughs> so yeah. we collected them by the pounds, but it made your back ache a bit, but it was good. Yeah. Jenny, what about you? What did you have for breakfast? Scrambled egg on toast. Scrambled egg on toast. Nice. Nice, nice. yes. Yeah. And what about you, Celia? What did you have for breakfast? Um, I had um, grapefruit and then I had um, muesli with banana. So. Nice. Really nice. All the stuff I like. <laughs> uh, Alan, what about you? What did you have for breakfast? Oh, just some cereal stuff. That's Can't nice. remember what. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> Thank you. And Brian? Yeah? What did you have for breakfast, Brian? What we always have every morning, me and my wife. Porridge and fruit. Nice. I love porridge. My husband eats porridge like twice a day. I, he could eat it for like, th even for lunch or dinner. He <laughs> loves porridge. <laughs> Oh, thank you so much for sharing this as well. And I will see you next Tuesday and we will do some chair exercises and maybe chair dancing. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you, Aggie. Thank you. Thank you. Have a lovely week and a weekend and, and stay safe, stay well. Okay. Bye. 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 Thank you. Bye. Bye. Thanks. Thank you, everyone. <laughs> Thank you.